Hi, today we're going to talk about connecting a Festo CPX E CCC1 PN PLC up to a uh, CTU EC, which is sitting on a, uh, a VTUG 10 valve bank. And there's also a, uh, a little interface card VAEM PT 16 mashed in between the, the gateway and the valve terminal. And it's EtherCAT. That's the technology we're using. So the PLC has got a um, couple ports here. EtherCAT port right here at the bottom. That's the master. Uh, a couple of Ethernet ports here and a couple of PropyNet ports. The PropyNet ports that we're not using, and we're just going to use the Ethernet port to connect to for um, programming. And uh, this is the general topology. I don't need all these switches at the bottom. It's just what I have kicking around. And that's it. Let's get rolling here. So start up your Codasys version 35104, which can be downloaded at the Festa website. And you need the target package for the CPX-E. So I'm just going to show you here the package manager that we've got installed. So that package has been installed. And this is the Service Pack 10. So we're going to create a new project here. And find a directory. OK, select a directory, select this, hit OK. And wait. OK, so I always, well, show all devices. I always do that. So it's the C1 we're using. Uh, I do need the EtherCAT master, and for the sake of I'm only going to hook up hardware here, I'm just going to select structure text and let it create the project. OK, a couple of first things I always do. Uh, double click on the device, scan for the PLC, double click it, or set active path. So now we have that in our, in our project. Next thing I always do, I like to have update I.O. and stop. It's a little bit like TwinCat back off so that the I.O. is always scanning. And I always enable the I.O. so it's in the bus scan. Uh, these as well. And main task as the bus cycle task. That's very important. And the main task here, let's go with, uh, was it four? Two. Um, and then EtherCAT master to, okay, so as you can see here, we have some default things here. So I'm just going to quickly go online and suck up the PLC. So because we have selected the path already, I can just go into here, double click, go to actual configuration, scan, it picks up the cards and the PLC and hit apply. And it'll open up a whole can of worms on the left hand side over here. Hit the save button. And I don't need to do anything over here. This is all default. The the big thing I need to do is what? Oh, basically now I have a bare bone EtherCAT master. I'm gonna dump this in. So I'm gonna download this. A fresh copy of the PLC on there. All right. So we've got that there. I can go offline now. I can stay online if I want, but basically, just like in TwinCat or back off, you come down here and you scan for devices. And like I said in my picture, I have the VTUG 10 which is the main base with all the valves. And then I have a VAEM PT16, which is that, and then the CTUEC. So if you go back to the picture here, CTUEC, CTEU, which is the EtherCAT modular, and then below that is the VAEM 16 point. So I'm gonna click this and say, copy to project. And theoretically, I could just dump this in right now and say download. Download it, it's, it's running. 
I can come into here, go to my mapping, control F7, and the valves are on. I'm done. Um, do I want to show anything else? Yeah, I do want to show some other things. So here's a couple other things. So now that we have this working, I always like to enable expert settings because we're all experts. I don't know why it's not enabled. And uh, I'm going to download this now again. F5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the cable off. Cable's off. I have a fault. Let's go see here. Status. Not running. Go to the master. It says diagnostic message bad. Uh, bus failure information. Okay, so I plug the connector back in, cable, and hey, we're not we're not restarting. So if I come up now and I do a reset cold, or yeah, reset cold, yes, maybe even a restart, it starts back up and starts running. Uh, I'm just gonna pull that again. Same fault. Reset warm. And that resets it too. Okay, so let's say we don't want to reset it. So let's go back offline in a sec and look at the master. Because under options that are hidden, <laughs> there's this little button here, automatic restart. So I'm going to dump this back in. Yes. It's running. I'm going to pull the connector off. Bus goes down. I'm going to plug it back in. And the bus comes back up. Now, that's great. So there's another thing to learn. So let's look at the last thing. Well, let's look at the next thing. Um, so online mode. So we have the state right here. And we come down here. We put it in it. Into pre-op. And let's say you want to go to bootstrap. Why is it jumped operational? Well, that's because you just turned on automatic restart. So there's pros and cons to everything. So I'm going to turn that back off and dump it back in. Download it. F5. So if I go back to here, init, pre-op, bootstrap, init, pre-op. Uh, one of these is in... Uh, probably faulted it out now. Set warm. Here's another thing is um, under the device that I like to do, this update IO and stop, I'm going to turn that off. When you're playing around with that, that's another thing that affects that. So we're in run mode, it's running. And go back to the online here and knit. See, pre op, safe op. See, all those little check boxes help with the, some things, but they, they conflict with other things. So it's very important to understand that. And I could always just do a warm restart to get, get re going here. F5. We're back up and running again. The next thing is um, extremely important. I'm just going to go online from device and look at all the CAN over Ethercat um, values here. I'm going to suck up everything from the device. Um, and we've got an identity. So we're a Rev6. And the Rev6, if you go to the FESTA website here, this is the Rev6 firmware. If you don't have a Rev6, upgrade it. Find out how to upgrade it because I started off a project with Rev3 and Rev3 does not work with the Service Pack 10 code assist. What will happen is uh, every time you cycle power or do anything, the, you'll, it doesn't reset properly. You have so many different little inconspicuous problems. Um, <clears throat> 
So make sure your, your, your data revision is at least this number six here, software version, hardware, so on and so forth. Uh, what else here have we got? Startup, nothing here. Oh, startup, sure. Um, let's just quickly look at that offline here. Go to add under settings. What these do for you is uh, you can uh, you can configure. Well, how do I go about saying it? You can configure tool change mode and stuff like that through parameters. So you would come into here, drag those in, and once you've got them in, you have to kind of. There's a little bit of a bug here. Okay, so now that we have values here, we can say, hey, I want this to be true. I want the data to be this size for the tool change. I'm assuming this is how it works. I haven't read the manual, not yet. Uh, but basically tool change mode is just, you know, ignoring diagnostics during startup. And you would set up like a, a generic size of bytes in and out. And whatever tool you hook up to it, it ignores the fact that you have different hardware. It's just going to say it's the same data size and away you go. Um, that's it. So I'm just going to delete that and go back. Uh, oh, this here that doesn't really work for the CTU. I've tried this. It doesn't work. This here allows you to uh, give the um, the device a Ethernet IP address, a virtual one, so that you can get to it Ethernet over EtherCAT. And you basically come in here, go down here, and put in a an IP address that's the same thing on your network but not conflicting and away you go and then you could get to the web page for it I'm not going to show you that and that is about it we're we're done save project another simple project